Come on in, cop a squad. The name's McCritic, Rap McCritic to be precise, which as a detective you damn well better believe I am. I specialize in hip hop cases, finding my clues by sleuthing into the digital back alleys of the less visited pages of the internet to root through the trash bins of our collective memories, hold songs of the past up to the clarifying lens of time, and see if they were worth all the hype we gave them in the first place. So when I got today's case, I was especially intrigued. The message was from a woman who requested I look into a curiosity called Let Me Clear My Throat by one DJ Cool. And it particularly threw me off because it came priority cued from someone who gave the name Taya and claimed to be the wife of the producer of the song and album for today's request. I dropped my weed vape in shock. I had never gotten someone who was so close to a case putting in a request before. I immediately took to the internet to do some searching. For a new weed vape first, I accidentally dropped it in a glass of apple juice, but after that I opened another tab to probe further into the rabbit hole of questions her letter sent me falling into. Because at first I wanted to know why. Why would someone so close want a bulldog like me snooping around their business? But what I wasn't prepared for was the onion of a story this turned out to be. Once one question got answered, it would peel back a layer to another question, and so on. Because as I was listening to the track, I realized that so far in my life I had only heard the live version, and tried to find out if there was an original studio version uh, that would have made the song popular in the first place. But after an increasingly repetitive search with perpetually misleading titles, it struck me. There is no studio version. Oh sure, a version without Slick Rick and Biz Marquee is there, but there distinctly wasn't a version that sounded like it was a studio mix. The only thing I would find is a live version that was recorded for the music video. Which led me to the inevitable next question. If this video version is the only official version, how the hell do the people in the audience already know what the call and response parts are? <laughs> I mean, as music listeners now, with the song retroactively implanted into our consciousness as a sports arena and cookout staple, we naturally assumed there would be crowds of folks singing along to it. But well, there had to be a point where people didn't know about the song, right? So y'all know how to do this! So y'all don't! Yeah, then this lyric especially started sticking in my craw, cause, well, how do these people know the words? How did we get from this song not existing to a video where an enthusiastic crowd already knows the words? Now I'm sure your thoughts were the same as mine. You're thinking at first maybe the studio version is the official version, and all the live sounding elements are all studio craft to make it sound like a live show, with the video made after to put the whole package together. But that's not it. Well, maybe you're thinking the audience was given the lines day of, so it's like the music video version of a laugh track that tricks you into thinking the song is popular from all the folks singing along to it from the get-go. But that wasn't it either. As I looked further into the case, I didn't realize just how much it was all gonna come swinging back to what was staring me in the face, the very reason for the song's existence right in the title all along. Let me clear my See, in an attempt to get more acquainted with this style, I checked out the album the record is from and came across another tune called 20 Minutes of Funk, a track that's, oddly enough, only eight minutes long, but contains a conspicuous moment at the end. Let me clear my throat. And it was another shockwave to my system. Because according to the history books, this track dropped first, and in fact was on the album before Let Me Clear My Throat appears. Which would mean the song that we now know here is not only sampling the intro from Hollywood Swingin', Let me see those hands again. Yeah. Hey, and not only is the infamous saxophone sample itself a clipped moment from hip-hop producer 45 King, who took it from Marvel Washington's Unwind Yourself, jump, 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 jump. But technically, on Let Me Clear My Throat, he's sampling the other track of him sampling himself already doing that. Well, needless to say, this sent me spiraling into a sampleception, and I needed some ground beneath me, so I scoured the internet for any interview I could find to untie the Gordian knot of this mystery. The curiosity led me on a wild goose chase through a slew of internet hollow holes they call websites, where a guy gets paid to make a robot write articles on music they couldn't give two non-sentient shits about. Seriously, what is this? Uh, the song emphasizes the idea of people coming together to enjoy music? Uh, he he wanted to express his innermost thoughts and emotions through music that would resonate with his audience. What, uh, what the hell? He said it to sound like nothing more than an unfeeling machine desperately trying to capture the human emotion of enjoying live music. But ever lingering in my mind was the mad question. What was the secret behind what made him see this moment as the formula for mainstream success? However, in one of those robot written screeds, I found a video link with some pertinent information that the article didn't even mention. An interview from the man himself that would bust this case wide open. Okay, here's the story of Let Me Clear My Throat. Um, Let Me Clear My Throat was born out of um, an accident. 
See, according to him, he was performing his normal show, where he would transition to his hip-hop set from his go-go set, a music style native to DC that typically involves live pots and pans sounding percussion and a gruff voice at the helm, signified by the godfather of the style, Chuck Brown. And she said, Chuck, baby, don't give up. She said, Chuck, baby, don't give up. And he said, And just like you'd suspect, one night he actually did get some phlegm caught in his throat before he could speak in the middle of a transition. I'm going through this. And this coughing thing that I was doing was because I was actually coughing. And I said, God damn. And so then I kept doing it. And the crowd started trying to mimic what I was doing with the, re here, here, here we go again with this call and response thing that was um, not even planned at all. But I guess the crowd just started vibing with me. So there it was in black and white, a genuine accident that turned into a moment because people thought he was doing it on purpose. So then next thing you know, the next week comes around, and mind y'all, I was playing this club every Tuesday. People coming in, who's you gonna clear your throat again this week? Huh, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, what I did last week, uh, yeah, why not? So from just the tail end of that 20 minutes of funk joint, DJs were getting so much juice from the crowds that when he was asked to record the song live at a popular club in Philly, he had a built-in set of fans who were keyed in to know the bit, to hit the goddamn right after he does the coughing fit. <laughs> well, it all comes together now. Essentially, the man had the 90s equivalent of a TikTok moment and tried to parlay it into a full hit song, which, lucky for him, actually worked out. So in the end, the live recording aspect was the key to it all. The almost tangible energy of live performance, where spontaneous moments can spring forth in a way you could never have planned, that you had to be there to truly value the moment. But wait, I missed all these jokes and japes, I'd forgotten my initial question. Why would someone so close want a case like this revealed? What was the motivation? What did she want from me? Maybe there's a clue in the letter. What did... Oh, wait, does it... Does it say it was a request for a birthday video? Oh, well, uh, all right, that makes sense. I probably could have read this letter a little bit more thoroughly. Well, anyways, happy birthday, man. Hope you had a good one. Well, that's the episode. And if you'd like to request a song, movie, or album for me to review, as well as get it priority requested like today's request was, head on down to the links below for the dark holiday sale, or up to the end of November, we'll be having reduced prices for all the requests on Kofi, as well as priority queuing when you sign up to the $5 Patreon level, where you get to see episodes early, join the Discord, and a bunch of other fun stuff like that. So check all those links out if you want to support the show, and I'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>